All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I want to go over nine marketing tools that I actually use pretty much every day uh, when I'm managing clients, when I'm managing my own business. Um, so these are some of my favorite marketing tools that you should use or at least uh, see if they're going to work for your business or uh, maybe you're using a current tool and you want to test something new. Um, so let's get right into it. So number one, one of my favorite tools is Google Analytics. Um, so with Google Analytics, you can see all sorts of data about your website, your apps. Um, they even have some more things for offline activity. Um, but with Google Analytics, I install it on every website I run, I manage, uh, create, anything like that, because you can see you know, where your traffic is coming from, how valuable that traffic is. You can set up your key performance indicators in Google Analytics, like sales, like leads, and you can track them and see what sources of traffic drive the most for your business. Um, so really, it's a great tool to see you know, how you can increase your business, and you can see so many areas of opportunity. Um, so just a quick example for you. So I worked with a client who's running Facebook ads, Google AdWords, Bing ads, basically the whole mix. And we tracked everything into Google Analytics. And at the end of each month, we were able to see how much we got for our dollar. So we could actually adjust our budgets on the fly. So we could see, okay, we just had a great month with Facebook ads. Um, so what we're going to do is put more money into Facebook ads and pull it out of another resource that's not driving the same results. Um, so with Google Analytics, you can quickly and easily see everything you need to know about your business and ways to improve it. So... In addition to Google Analytics, one of my other favorite tools, um, especially when you're getting started with a new business or you know you're looking for a new industry to target, um, what we have is the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. So, unfortunately, they're updating the interface here. Um, so if you scroll to the bottom, you can open the previous Keyword Planner. Um, we have a pretty popular tutorial on our channel for the Keyword Planner, so it kind of stinks they're updating it. Um, but we'll have a new one out as soon as it's fully rolled out. So, um, what you can do here with the Keyword Planner is find all sorts of keywords that people are searching for your business. Um, so for Surfside PPC, for example, I could just come in here search PPC advertising and they'll pull up all sorts of keywords that are uh, related to PPC advertising um, I could see competition I could see the top you know how much people are bidding for it geez the top bid on AdWords $1,000 <laughs> um, so uh, you can see like average monthly searches you could see all sorts of different keywords here um, so for example let's just say I'm scrolling down a little bit I can see AdWords management so I can create a whole article about you know how AdWords management works different things like that um, I can look at, let's see, pay-per-click sites. So I can say, what are the top pay-per-click sites? Um, how to create a pay-per-click campaign? Uh, so different things like that. And you can try to find different keywords. The ultimate goal with the keyword plan is try to find some long tail keywords. So maybe PPC advertising strategies or things like that. Um, so areas where you can continue to improve uh, your own website by targeting keywords with your content, um, because that's one of the best ways to improve your business. Just target keywords with your content. The other thing you can see search volume trends. Um, so for PPC advertising, it's not as, you know, there's not a huge dip or anything, but you'll see, like, especially for certain consumer products, I know I've searched headphones in here before, and headphones has a huge lift from October to December, and then it's pretty low for the rest of the year, so you can tell it's a big holiday item, um, so you can kind of see different things in the keyword planner, and it also helps with PPC advertising for keyword research, so... Um, the next tool that we're gonna, that I love is uh, the Google Search Console, aka Google Webmaster Tools. Um, so um, I actually don't know if this is called Webmaster Tools anymore, but the Search Console here, um, if you go to google.com slash webmasters, um, but you can see here, so I love to use it because I can see I have my website open for farmhousegoals.com. Um, so you can see the top clicks and impressions for specific search queries in Google for the last uh, 28 days. So the last 28 days, I've driven 127 clicks on my website almost 4,000 impressions. And if I scroll down, I could see, okay, these are the top keywords uh, that are driving impressions. These are the top keywords that are driving clicks or at least search queries, things that people are typing in. So I can find areas of opportunity here. Um, so what I love to do with the uh, Google Search Console is scroll down and try to find something like Farmhouse TV Stand. So if I have an article on my website or a product page on my website full of Farmhouse TV Stands, I can go and try to improve it because I can see 0, 20. The other thing you can look at is your average position in the search results when people are searching it and finding it. Uh, you'll find that some of them are pretty far down. So Farmhouse TV Stand, my average position is 81. That means there's 80 people in front of me. But if I can improve my content and I can keep improving that, then you know it's a great way to help rank. Um, also, if I click on pages over here, uh, so this is another thing I love to do. So usually pages tend to get slightly more impressions. 
Um, so I can see what my top pages are here in terms of clicks, um, in terms of impressions. So I can see fire clay farmhouse sinks, one click, 164 impressions, position 45, which isn't terrible for considering this is how new this website is. But I can come into this page, fire clay farmhouse sinks. Maybe I add 250 words of content. Maybe I add some more products, more images. Maybe I try to find a relevant video or something like that. So you can keep improving your content, um, and it just depends on who you're targeting. So. Um, Google Search Console, along with Google Analytics, along with the Google Keyword Planner, can be a great way to target keywords and continue to drive traffic to your website. Um, and organic traffic is, is such a great source of value because you have to put a lot of time and effort into building content around specific keywords, um, you know, creating great pages of content and different things like that. Um, but ultimately, what's going to do is drive value to your business. So these are the three tools I probably use the most. Um, so tool number four is going to be WordPress. Um, so you're probably familiar with WordPress already, but um, powers 30% of the internet. I build pretty much all my websites on WordPress, um, unless I'm using like an e-commerce, you know, Shopify. But even WordPress has e-commerce integrations with, you know, WooCommerce and different types of things like that. So love WordPress. Uh, it's, you know, you have to pay to host your website, but it's pretty... Uh, pretty low cost and they have so many tools that when things change you can quickly add them to WordPress for example accelerated mobile pages became a new uh, you know a new feature in Google and so I just downloaded the accelerated mobile pages plugin installed it on my website and that's it so I don't have to do you know tons of work and create accelerated mobile pages you know separate from my own I just have to make sure I have my content in my accelerated mobile pages section and the plugin does all the work for me so that's why I love WordPress because all the plugins make it so simple and my tool number five and my favorite WordPress plugin is the Yoast SEO plugin. So with Yoast SEO, you can see uh, basically everything you need to about your articles in terms of the keywords you're targeting, um, how well that Yoast thinks you're targeting that keyword. So you know how many times it appears in the article, if your keyword density is too high, too low, um, whether or not you have images that are built around that keyword. And they'll also give you a readability score for each page. So if, if your page content isn't really great in terms of how well people can read it, uh, maybe you're not using transition words well, maybe you don't, you just have long paragraphs of text and, you know, nothing's split by headers, they'll tell you that your file's not very, or your page isn't very readable, so it's going to be less likely to rank on Google. Um, so what I try to go for is they give you a green dot for a good keyword, a green dot for good readability score. So it helps you optimize all of your content so that everything so that Yoast can say, okay, you're targeting the keyword here very, very well. Um, or they can say, you're not targeting this keyword well at all, and you're not going to be able to rank very well for it. So it's a great way to optimize your for search engine optimization. Um, they just give you so many different options with Yoast, and it's all uh, all works with WordPress. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to, to optimize your website for search engines. Um, so Yoast SEO, my favorite SEO plugin. They also have Yoast SEO Premium, which I use on some websites. So highly recommend this plugin. Tool number six is going to be MailChimp. Um, so you probably heard of MailChimp too before, but it's our we use it for email marketing, for Surfside PPC, for Beachfront Decor. Um, but uh, what you can do with MailChimp is we have it set up so when someone fills out our newsletter form, we automatically email them back. So that's one uh, feature of MailChimp is an autoresponder. You can set up that when someone fills out their information, they automatically get an email from you for MailChimp. Um, and then what happens is people are part of our email list and we can send them our newsletter. So with MailChimp, um, some of your most valuable consumers are going to be those that sign up for your email list and those that continue to stay engaged with your email list because they're choosing to get your content in their inbox. If you think about your own inbox, whether you use Gmail, any of those, Yahoo, um, you're always going to have certain companies email you and you choose which companies are going to email you. And if you're kind of sick of their stuff, you unsubscribe from it. So MailChimp kind of assures that you have a group of people that are highly interested in your content and you don't really have to worry about if you're sending things out people won't subscribe and do all that you just have to continuously add new people to your email list and keep trying to send value to people so um, your email list can be a great source of uh, you know revenue and different things for your business um, the ultimate thing is you don't want to annoy your email list you just want to uh, give them your bet most valuable information and also give them deals. Um, if someone signs up for my email list, my ultimate goal is to say, you know, if, if I'm going to release a product, I'm going to give the people on my email list a discount um, because, you know, it's, it's, it's something where they're choosing to get my content into their inbox, um, you know, at least on a weekly basis. So I love MailChimp. Um, they have free, you can try it for free when you're starting and then they'll price it as you start adding more subscribers. So as your email list gets bigger, they increase their price but that doesn't matter so they really work with you well because as your email list gets bigger you can easily get more value out of it than what you're paying MailChimp so great marketing tool here for email marketing 
Uh, so tool number seven here is going to be the Tailwind app. Um, so I love the Tailwind app because I use it for Pinterest more than Instagram. But what you can do is say, okay, I want to take these 25 time slots each day. So let's just say, for example, I do 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and you just do that for each hour. And we'll add another time slot in there. Let's just say we have 25 total time slots. And what you can do is upload pins um, and just fill those time slots so that you're constantly having pins released on Pinterest rather than, you know, some people on Pinterest, they try to go on, upload 100 pins at once on a Monday, and then they don't go back on Pinterest. So with, with Tailwind, what you can do is schedule all of your Pinterest pins. Um, so you can create, you know, like I said, all these time slots during the day. You upload if you upload 100 pins at once um, and you have those 25 time slots, now you have pins going out for the next four days, which is much better because you're constantly keeping people engaged, especially the people who are following your page and interacting with everything. So Tailwind app, I love it for Pinterest. Um, you could also use it for Instagram. They have a lot of different features. Uh, they also have things where the things you're pinning on Pinterest, you can share on Facebook and Twitter, um, and they'll also help you just overall optimize your Pinterest profile. Uh, so they'll give you different uh, Pinterest analytics, uh, things that will help you to see your top pins. Uh, you can see some of your boards that aren't completely optimized. So this is one of the best best uh, marketing tools I use. I think the pricing was about $120 for the year. I'm not sure what it is now. I mean, you can see it on the website, but um, definitely worth it for me. Um, if you're in e-commerce or something like that, Tailwind app is, is an incredible tool, and you can easily drive traffic to your website by uh, by uploading Pinterest pins all at once. So I usually just upload pins once during the day, and I'm or once a week, and I'm good for the entire week. So it makes it much easier and quicker and more efficient to manage everything. My next tool, um, so for social media scheduling on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, um, sometimes Instagram, um, I love Hootsuite you can see kind of everything. And the one cool thing with Hootsuite um, is you can kind of see your timeline. You can see people who have direct messaged you. You can see everything from one screen. Um, so it makes it a lot easier. Um, they also have free plans. Um, so if you have one user for three social profiles, one user and three social profiles. So, uh, and even their other plans are pretty, uh, pretty inexpensive. So I love Hootsuite for social media scheduling. Uh, makes things a lot easier. So what I'll do is... I have my Google Plus, Facebook, and Twitter uh, connected under the free plan. And what I'll do is when I finish an article like Facebook Video Ads Guide and Best Practices, I can just take it, copy the URL, write a quick little description, you know, check out the best practices for creating Facebook video ads, and I can put it out on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google Plus all at once, and it'll pull in this image here too. So it's uh, I like using Hootsuite. It's a good, uh, good tool, and I'll probably eventually upgrade to the professional plan when I get a little better... Uh, with my social media and PPC advertising, we've been so focused on YouTube. So uh, my ninth marketing tool is Canva. Um, so if you've never heard of Canva, it's a great way to create graphics for social media for your website. Um, you could even create uh, professional documents, uh, graphics for them. So a lot of different things you can do. Um, so just to kind of go back to our Tailwind uh, example here, sometimes, or actually a lot of times what I do is I come into Canva here and I'll click on Pinterest graphic. Um, so if we come into Pinterest graphic here, you can see uh, they have a bunch of templates here to the left. So like 10 Instagram worthy vacation spots. All you have to do is update, you know, this text here. So I could do 10 Facebook video best practices. Uh, you could take this image, delete the image, update the image, and I have a nice little Pinterest graphic right there. So um, very easy, um, and they have a ton of different things here, so just look at an easy one. So let's say maybe I even, let's say I create a video about how to get more Instagram followers. Um, I could just use this graphic, take this photo out of the back, so delete image, and you just have to add your photo in the background here. But it's a great tool for uh, creating different uh, graphics, whether it's for your your website, your social media profiles, different things like that. Um, I love Canva. They have a, a free option, so you can use and use a ton of their features for free. And then they also have a paid option as well. That's $10 a month. So I'm a huge fan of Canva. I use this almost every day to create pins, create social media graphics. Um, I create all my YouTube video graphics in Canva. They're not great, but you know I'm not a great designer. So um, Canva, great tool. Um, I'd highly recommend using it. And last but not least, I want to give you a bonus tool. So we said nine, but I'll give you a tenth for a bonus tool. Um, so I use this very often, SEMrush. Um, it's a competitive analysis tool where you can see, uh, if you come here, you can see organic research, advertising research, display advertising, backlinks, keyword research, product listing ads. You can see all of that for your competitors. Um, so once you pay for SEMrush, I think they have a free trial as well. Um, but once you pay for SEMrush, all you do is type in a domain right here. 
Um, you could actually come here and if you go into the free option and type a domain, it'll give you a little bit of information. But you can see things like my favorite thing is you can see your competitor's best keywords under organic research. So for Surfside PPC, I can see, you know, which other competitors are ranking for specific keywords. I can find new keywords that I can potentially rank for. And it gives you more opportunities in terms of, you know, I can let's say I look at a specific website that I'm trying to compete with and I can see their top five keywords, I can try to rank for some of their top five keywords and steal some of their traffic from them. So it's a great way to research your competitors, see what they're doing well and try to improve what they're already doing. Um, so highly recommend checking out SEMrush. Even if you come here for free and just type in your own URL, type in a competitor URL, their information is pretty accurate. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty accurate and they can pull in you know what keywords your competitors are targeting on Google AdWords uh, all sorts of things. So um, SEMrush are 10th bonus tool. So uh, these are our, these are 10 tools, nine tools plus a bonus tool that I use uh, basically every day uh, in terms of marketing. So I uh, highly recommend trying them. Some are paid, some are unpaid, but none of them are highly, highly expensive and a lot of them have free features. So give them a try if you haven't already tried any of these. Um, you might already know a lot of them, but um, if you're not using them well, try to use them, you know, try to get better at each individual tool so you can kind of maximize your marketing efforts. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching our video today.